Alright, hello and welcome. Good afternoon everybody. I'm super honored, super glad that you're all here, that you have enough stamina and energy to remain for the very last talk of this Flutter Europe conference. Um, I'm going to talk like from the business perspective about the Flutter because you have a lot of technical details during those two days and I'm going to present uh, the business view on the matter and uh, because my purpose for this presentation would be to spread love. I mean, who doesn't love Flutter after those two days? Is there anybody brave on the audience here? So I believe we all love it. The question is, what should we do in order to um, spread this love feather uh, from the business perspective? And so that you understand what I mean by business perspective, uh, the business perspective for me is the perspective of the product owner, uh, so, the, so the person responsible for making key decisions regarding the product, and for the person responsible for the budget, so basically it's the client. But also when I mean the business, I mean uh, CEOs, so the people uh, to whom you report, whom you should convince that the Flutter is the key technology for your internal projects, for, your, for the applications you want to create. Uh, so those stakeholders are uh, to be considered today and uh, why I think I'm the good person to talk about that uh, because I used to be a CEO of uh, what, is, what is currently the biggest Polish startups for three years, Audioteca. Uh, right now I'm a CEO at Linkcoach, so around the software studio. I have many other things uh, on my list, but uh, the one of them I want to mention is that I have the background also in service design, and uh, which means that... Uh, uh, I was able to understand the benefits of Flutter also from this perspective. And I remember myself being approached first time about the Flutter by uh, our team. I remember that uh, the Flutter is a product first platform and to be more specific is a user first platform because for the Flutter uh, you don't need to differentiate between uh, platforms and you don't need to mm, use those artificial barriers between iOS and Android, for example. You just have to have this experience in mind and create the best possible product. Uh, but this, this is like the argument we know. Uh, other well-known arguments, just to briefly mention them, is one team so that you don't need to create a different component simultaneously and so that you can have the same spirit for all the people involved in the projects. Uh, and uh, you have also one backlog so that you can, it's easier for you to monitor the progress. And you have one simple, well, it's far simpler to run automated tests. So quality assurance is also uh, better kept when it comes to the Flutter. But those arguments are valid also for other cross-platform solutions on the market. So for us, uh, what is special about Flutter uh, is the way that we um, approach that, because you need to understand our history. And when it comes to Linkcode, at the very beginning, we were involved in startups. So we have like two startups in the food tech industry. Uh, we exited from the one. And when we were spending our own money, we were creating apps natively. But it was years ago, and at that time, that was the best solution. However, we soon realized that for certain cases, for certain business cases, uh, we need to find uh, something more efficient, and therefore we started to experiment with Zamarin like two years, uh, three years ago, in March uh, 2017. And uh, it means that uh, we were trying to uh, get the best uh, of uh, this framework for the platforms, uh, but soon realized after a year of uh, creating several applications in Zamarin that this platform is on fire. I mean, that some of the bugs that were happening in production are related to the platform itself, right? So we were finding it hard to maintain. We found it hard to uh, cope with new issues appearing. And uh, then we decided to conduct the research. And our first choice was React Native. Uh, it was a well known, well known platform. Uh, we started to develop our first commercial application in uh, June 2018. Uh, and uh, for that time, um, it, for those first commercial projects, uh, we were uh, focused on React Native, but uh, we're trying to still 
um, research the market, and as a result, we started to experiment with Flutter. And our first commercial application uh, was uh, uh, created, was started being created in August 2018, and uh, still at that time, it was an experiment. I mean, for the React Native, that was our recommendation. So we decided to go like, uh, if we have a new client, let's try uh, to recommend React Native. But the Flutter was only for those clients whom we can convince that uh, um, this is an early stage technology and we should try to experiment, right? So it was an honest approach. And still, I remember that for one of our key clients in December 2018, when we were asked about recommendation, we were still saying, okay, let's go React Native. But since the very beginning of 2019, we decided to change our recommendation for the Flutter. And uh, in order for you to understand what, was, uh, uh, what were uh, the conditions that uh, um, made us to change our recommendation, uh, we need to highlight two points here. Uh, first one being uh, uh, the speed of development, understood as uh, speed at which we are able to create uh, proof of concepts. And what I mean by proof of concepts are very quick projects, like uh, four, six hour long projects, uh, where we're able to create a downloadable app for the client. And uh, those apps were not like um, very, uh, very simple um, apps using some known components, but uh, complex interfaces using non-standard uh, features uh, so that to prove our clients that we can quickly solve their most intensive problems with that. We're using even like machine learning uh, algorithms in that uh, so that to uh, showcase that we can handle the most uh, important uh, aspect of the application uh, within the shortest possible time, right? Uh, so those very quick uh, POCs were indeed uh, successful in terms of convincing our clients to go for Flutter. Um, what is even more important is the community factor, because uh, uh, we all know that Flutter is right now hugely popular, right? We all know that, we all know history about stars on a GitHub, right? So uh, what happened early this year, but uh, I strongly believe that the Flutter community is stronger than uh, that what is being reflected by the stars on a GitHub. Because uh, what if we are living right in a reality tunnel and like if you ask your peer, your neighbor here sitting next to you today, what's your favorite technology? Most of us will answer flatter, right? But uh, let's, we should have more data about how, what is like the health check for our community. Uh, are we actually living in this tech bubble here, or indeed the world is interested in the Flutter itself. And if we look at the numbers, if we look at the statements made in time about the technology, we can easily see that Flutter indeed is incredibly popular, and Flutter is eight folds more popular than competitive technologies in terms of the statements, in terms of like posts, some mentions made all around the net. And what is even more important is that we can see that there's a trend in sharing the knowledge, in writing the articles so that people know more and more about Flutter and therefore they can contribute to the community as such. Uh, what is uh, also very important, and I think it's like a kind of a, hmm, let's say, health check, is that we are very open in discussions about Flutter. So if you, if you see this chart, there's also a pretty much comments, which are negative comments about Flutter. And I think it's super cool because we can talk openly about issues, about the problems. It's not like only uh, polished, uh, but it's a really uh, honest approach. And we can discuss that and we can make applications even better thanks to this negative feedback. Uh, and Speaking about the results of the projects that we uh, have created at Linkout, uh, from the business perspective, we need to understand what is most important for the business. So what is most important for the business? I wish you say passion, but it's money indeed, right? And uh, if we are talking about money, then time is a critical factor. And recently I got inspired, usually, by a great article, great article by Bram, 
created uh, and published recently uh, on the Code Magic blog. And this article uh, was analyzing um, different platforms from the time perspective, from the perspective of time spent on developing a simple application. It was a cocktail application, am I right, Ram? Right. right, and you see here that uh, this is the project uh, which was created, and this is totally amazing, like simultaneously for all those uh, five platforms, native iOS, native Android, Xamarin, React Native, and Flutter. So you're very gifted. Congratulations to that, <laughs> by the way. And uh, in this article, you could have seen the numbers of the time being compared uh, against each other. And we can argue about the scale of those differences. We can argue about whether it's 5%, whether it's 10%, whether it's 20%. But it is a fact that making up with Flutter, with this example, was definitely quicker. And quicker means cheaper. But you can also argue that with, uh, with this kind of an application, if we look at the total time spent on an app, this is a pet project, so this is not a commercial real app. So we should uh, look for an examples in which there is a real project, like 1,000 hours projects. And um, inspired by this article by Bram, uh, we decided to investigate how it works in our company. And we have an excellent case for that, because uh, we uh, created a digital product for our client. This is a marketplace for HR in Horeca business or hotels, restaurant, uh, which allows uh, those uh, employers to find employees for a temporary work. So the case like here with the conference, we have the waiters, and the, the company is not willing to uh, employ those waiters for a permanent job, but is only willing to uh, get like additional eight waiters for even, for example, right? So GastroJob is solving this problem by matching uh, two parts on this marketplace. So we have an employee app and an employer app. And when we're starting this project, we're creating an MVP, a uh, very, like, uh, uh, very uh, simple one, uh, but that MVP, MVP proved the point, and the client decided to extend the project with new features. And we told them that, OK, guys, we should consider changing to Flutter, because you have such a great backlog to be developed that it might be worth changing to Flutter, and they agreed. Super cool. And uh, thanks to that, we are basically writing the same application as we did in Xamarin, now in Flutter. The same user stories, so very same data. And we are able to compare the results. And what you can see here in the comparison is that for the applications, the time that we spend on development in Flutter is uh, like 60% of the time required to accomplish the same application uh, in Xamarin. And this, this time difference is huge. And what's even more important, if we compare the ratio of bugs being reported by the quality assurance team, uh, and if we look at the uh, employee app from this perspective, we can see that those applications, despite the fact that they were created quicker, they were, there were even less bugs being reported. Um, so this is a very strong argument. And but we have to remember that the time matters not only for stories, not only for the bugs, but also for the project management as such. And um, Flutter is also great because it enables us to communicate with the client clearly and uh, in a way that they have an instant feedback in an application. So imagine like we have the meetings, our application is running as a Flutter for desktop, so that we can, with the hot reload, make changes instantly while the client is demanding them during the demo session, right? So this is very powerful. It uh, quickens the communication a lot and streamlines those communication processes. And it was also very important, and here I was inspired yesterday, uh, in my interview with uh, Nate, thank you for that. Uh, you managed to come up with a very uh, powerful argument when it comes to the timing for the Flutter, which is the speed regarding uh, release date. Certain projects required uh, us, developers, um, to be created as soon as possible because there is a market opportunity, because there are competitors on the market and our client wants to have project as quick as possible on the market, right? So here Flutter is also a very good solution. So just to summarize that briefly, when we think about money, we think about time, and Flutter gives a lot of time because you save the time on developing stories and, uh, and uh, changing bugs, on 
on communication and it enables you to release on time or earlier than the competitors of your client. And so from the business perspective, those arguments are really strong. They resonate with our business audience perfectly. But then it comes that the product owners equipped with those arguments are getting back to their companies and are fighting with the tech team because the tech team is uh, uh, still uh, in a position where they see the risks behind the flutter. And so right now, let me give the floor to Mateusz, who will tell you about our experience from the tech team perspective. Okay, all right. So, thank you very much. Uh, so enough for the business, right? Because a majority of us here, we are developers. So we want to, to know some developer insight. And actually, me and the Dominic that you know, from this conference and from the community, we were leading a mobile team on, on the app that Wukash said about, uh, and we were rebuilding the Zamarin app to Flutter app. Uh, and uh, I want to share some insight and observations of our team after the switch. So I'm Mateusz, you can call Mati. Um, I'm a mobile developer at Linkode for uh, about four years right now. I'm co-organizer and co-founder of Flutter Warsaw Meetup. Uh, first I was iOS developer, then I switched to Xamarin, Xamarin Forms a bit, uh, React Native for a couple of months, and now for over a year, right now I'm a full-time Flutter developer. Uh, we've been organizing a couple of Flutter workshops here in Poland, and uh, I'm, this is my fl uh, Twitter handle, if you want to reach out to me or just follow. All right. So, the first thing that we observed in our team is that Flutter embraced another mindset, the mindset of product-first thinking, and developers started contributing more to the product itself. For example, uh, b before that, we were thinking about our work, like we have to do code, and we were like more uh, thinking about our code to be good and not about the whole product so much. And, uh, first thing was, was much more UX feedback from the developer team. Uh, like developers w used more the, uh, of their own app because they were caring more of product and were giving this feedback to the UX team. Then uh, we could talk about some new features and we, will, we would like sit with the designer in front, of, in, ho in front of a computer and fast iterating and make this widget look exactly like the designer wants to. So this, like, this was not the case before. And the mo most exciting thing is we could prototype life in front of the clients in the meeting. And th this was really exciting for the client because, you know, uh, when you are in the meeting, client has a lot of ideas. Yeah, you already know that. And he has these ideas, and actually he, you can visualize these ideas for him, in front of him. So it's, this is really, this works. Uh, right. So another thing is uh, about these barriers, artificial barriers that Lukas mentioned, that are because of the fragmentation on dif different platforms, right? The, there are different guidelines, different, different looks, different feeling and now this is this time is like about the more the product we make always a client said that they want their own design and they want they want their own guideline they own design language so when we made an app with Xamarin for example the designer with every feature he he would get the same question to us First one, should we, should we use material or Apple component or guideline? Or for example, should we use this material component or that material component? He was thinking in the box. Uh, then, is it doable for the team on both platforms? Because for example, there are things that are easy on Android, but more difficult on iOS, and also vice versa. So it's like, um, is it the same cost on both teams? And another question was, can we make this design pixel perfect? Because uh, there are uh, 
there is this type of design, a couple of things that look good only if they're exactly as designers said. Uh, you know what I mean? So this was these questions. And the feedback loop was huge because it was like every feature, everything, every bug, every, every change in UX and UI, like it resulted in, in these questions again and again and again. And now they are gone because of Flutter. So it's not only for us developers, but also with designer team. And we are more like do, doing it together right now. Uh, but what about developers? Well, yeah, again, for developers, it's more time for testing than we had before. Uh, so we, we did unit tests, and we, we had done unit tests before with uh, Xamarin app. But now we can make, we, we did more unit tests in the Flutter version, and also had time to, you know, experiment with widget tests for some UI component. And uh, in, the end of the, uh, in the end of the project, we experimented with our QA team, which was really helpful, and they wanted to check out this Flutter driver test. So we set it up, and they were really like, amazed by, by it, and QA team was like, really excited about it. So it, it was amazing. And another takeaway from Flutter project and the switch is how quickly we can train a developer coming not from Flutter, to do Flutter features. And as an example, I want to give this three-day-long bootcamp in the summer that we had in our company. Uh, it was like a fun bootcamp for our, for our uh, employees, but also we, we, were in, we invited some students uh, to, to make a bootcamp with Flutter, and they, will, uh, have to, like, they would have to do a Flutter app with Firebase chat. So they had no background of Flutter. So uh, it were three days, yeah? Day oh, one. Just notice here how advocated uh, Dominic, were. Yeah. <laughs> so well, day Flutter one. Flutter was there with us always. <laughs> yeah, Flutter, Dominic. Day one was like introduction. We gave the basics of Flutter to these guys. Day two and day three, they were like on their own and only uh, asking some specific errors around and we were like helping with specific problems only the issues and on day three uh, every of uh, ev every of the students on the mobile uh, app finished with the whole bunch of features that we wanted them to to make so it it, it it's it's shown to us that it's amazing how quickly you can train the developer to make usable things in flutter and it's not like with other frameworks we tried it, but it, it was not so much. And for the product, because we are thinking product first, we are agile, yeah, like everybody, and Scrum and agile, so product first thinking, better user reception. We released the new version in Flutter, and basically uh, what could happen? More five-star reviews from users, better reception. And uh, of course, less crashes with Flutter and less logical errors. This is also due to more testing, yeah, that I mentioned before. So, right, but last but not the least, and I think this is one of the most important things, uh, <coughs> is the community support. And our developer team was really, a, they, they were really talking about it because it's like, with, for example, with Xamarin, we had really a hard, hard journey, and uh, with community, it is not always this fun way like with Flutter. It's like there are some frameworks that are closed source, that are proprietary, or they are open source but really late. Or for example, uh, prioritizing of the issues is based on the, on the people who make a framework and not the people who use it, like us developers and clients and, and products. And with Flutter, uh, it's like the Flutter team uh, looks more uh, after the, 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 the people that use it and pro prioritizing the issues, yeah? Like on GitHub, for example. And this is amazing. And they are not closing issues that they cannot do or are not done. Because, for example, in React Native, when we had our journey, it, like, everyone who did React Native uh, experienced at least one issue that was closed but not resolved just automatically closed by the bot. And with Flutter, this is not an issue. It's like 
until it's done, it's open and it's really, really nice. And this is all, this is, uh, yes, this is it. And this is awesome uh, because this is really enhancing the, the work, the daily work on the product. So th that was the insight, actual insight from our developer team. So right, yeah. and, and uh, yes, thank you for that, Mateusz. And uh, taking that into account, I mean, the, those both parts, uh, the money issue, the time issue, the money savings that we have here, together with this passion shown by developers, uh, where it couldn't be our decision by, uh, but taking Flutter full scale at Lincoln. So we even recently changed that approach because we, we started to recommend Flutter, as I mentioned to you, in February 2019. Since 2020, we are not only recommending, but we're enforcing Flutter. I mean, we do not accept projects uh, other than the Flutter for the mobile uh, team. So, uh, except for like maintenance issue of our existing clients, because we want our clients to shift to Flutter, since we believe that uh, this is definitely worth the investment. And uh, having said that, uh, we also feel that our clients are sharing some insights on the very side, their arguments. They are also coming to us, uh, telling us what convinced them to go for the Flutter. And there is this unique like uh, opportunity with the Flutter to release the solution simultaneously for all platforms. Uh, this has been voiced uh, very often. Um, recently, I've seen an excellent presentation uh, by Jorge, who was with us today um, some time ago. And he also stressed that for BMW, when they were still working there with Felix, uh, they were still considering Flutter during the research as the key platform because of this ability to deploy simultaneously for all regions, all languages, all platforms, right? So this promise, we all know that this promise is not still not completely fulfilled, but this is a very powerful promise. And this promise is incentivizing the clients to go for the flatter. And uh, uh, so that you better understand the motives, so that you better understand how it resonates with the clients, let me also introduce another person to the stage. Mr. Romwald, would you like? who can tell us a little bit more about his arguments for entering Flutter. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Romuald Primus. I represent the company uh, Fintechcom. Actually, we are um, Polish uh, authorized payment institution, and I don't want to talk about our transaction systems. I want to talk about some about our last acquisition, what we are proud of, because we bought one and a half year ago uh, 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 the Polish oldest uh, uh, instant messenger, which is called uh, GG. Uh, previously, uh, a very well known like uh, Gadu Gadu. And I want to focus on, on, on this application, on this project, because it's, it's very well now uh, a brand, uh, brand uh, in Poland. And, uh, and I want to talk uh, and explain what convinced us to flatter. <clears throat> the first at all, I need to talk, say, say a little bit about uh, uh, Gadu Gadu. Uh, how I said is the oldest Polish messenger. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very, I, I'm hundred percent sure that every Poles know this brand, <laughs> uh, uh, and unfortunately, hundred percent sure that everybody from abroad don't had about it at all. Uh, so how it start? Uh, that that. Uh, mm, it's uh, the 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 Gadu Gadu was launched in 15th of August 2000, and very quick become very popular, very famous in Poland, and and uh, in the peak time they got seven million uh, users, active users, and who sent almost 300 million messages per day. So it was huge achievement in 2000. Yeah. Uh, I will uh, show you in the later on the uh, lifetime that uh, uh, that nobody got such uh, this solution in the in the past. So on the lifetime, I will see GG was launched in 2000, and then Skype 2003, WhatsApp 2009. So nine years later. Viber, 10 years later, uh, Messenger from uh, Facebook, 11 years, WeChat, etc., Telegram, Signal. So probably I can risk uh, and say 
that uh, before they copy our solution, we was the the biggest messenger on the world. Uh, uh, so unfortunately, the, a lot of money was invested in in Facebook Messenger and other WhatsApp and. And it's only the the history. It's it's only the past. We are not so great how we used to be. So a lot of our users uh, 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 went to different platforms. Of course, uh, I'm not uh, responsible for that because we we purchased uh, uh, GG just one and a half year ago. But. I, I got I, I had or since I bought it I got access to some uh, some statistic and I will show uh, how it's happened. It's it's not from the beginning. How you see, uh, it's huge drop in the number of of users, but it's still the the GG still got great potential because we got still around uh, one million users log on and and active over much more over 600,000 so it's uh, compared to the past it's 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 maybe not uh, amazing but 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 it's still huge potential because how i said it's still over 1 million users uh, uh, log into this application uh, every month uh, and it's, it's similar you can see the number of messages sent uh, it's still huge potential how I said, the brand is very well now, uh, 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 and and uh, so so weekly now now they send uh, about ninety thousand now ninety millions messages per 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 week. So in the amount is all, uh, over uh, three hundred fifty million messages. So it's it's huge potential in in this, uh, and how you see, we still got a lot of registration. So it's about 23,000 per week, but it's not, you can't multiply by <laughs> weeks by week because uh, uh, unfortunately our uh, uh, security department have to, uh, uh, many times we have to be forced to close a lot of uh, users' accounts who, who not follow our uh, uh, terms and conditions, who abuse others, etc. And it's a very common problem with uh, social networks, for example, Facebook. Uh, closed a uh, couple of months ago. During three months, they closed two billion accounts. So, and and it's this uh, uh, interesting uh, diagram as well because uh, uh, in, in 2000, smartphone didn't exist in in Poland, and and people uh, 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 use other phones. And since uh, uh, smartphone become very popular. Now you see 100% uh, of our users uh, on uh, 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 use just smartphone. It is still over 100, uh, over 400,000 uh, uh, users. So, what's wrong? Uh, what's went wrong? <laughs> Obviously, the money. The, the Facebook invest, for example, in 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 uh, 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 WhatsApp. Two billion dollars, but what we identified the problems. So the the the, the GG app was focused only on Polish market. The, the, they never had uh, English version. Now we see this a lot of uh, it's old technology uh, in application. We we had five different interfaces. So it was uh, Windows phones, uh, iOS, Android. Uh, uh, for webs and and desktops, so it was difficult to maintain five of them, uh, different implementation and different uh, 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 time you know, for launching new facilities, etc. So um, problems with recruiting uh, developers to all technology, and uh, 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 and we need to recruit actually separate for. So, so I have you have you see I start thinking how to solve the problem, <laughs> and and uh, there was mainly two solutions to to in, to hire uh, more programmers separately for each technology, which would what we no want to do. We we just employ about thirty people, uh, uh, and uh, uh, programmers as much less because the other people are, are, are convinced uh, are employed in in transaction department, etc. So uh, and it's quite high cost to maintenance this this uh, four separate uh, application. So uh, 
for months we discussed with our, our teams how to solve the problems and we, we found some cross-platform solution and I very, uh, I very uh, convinced uh, now to the um, Flutter it's, uh, 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 um, but it was not an easy process because we got some resistance from our programmers, obviously p p people who got uh, uh, big knowledge and experience in other technology, they now want to learn something new, which is quite risky. It's a risky technology because we are not sure it will work on all platforms because we, we still got four, like desktop, Windows, Android, iOS, so it's quite risky for them. And still, we are not afraid Google will support this technology. Uh, and how you see, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, we are afraid it will be not uh, um, very uh, suitable for, for, for all our solutions. But uh, going to the conclusion, <laughs> Uh, we, we definitely decide to, to go to Flutter and I believe that, that uh, businesses like mine, smaller and bigger, will force developers and, and soft houses to, to go this way, to, to do it something similar, uh, uh, cheaper, uh, simpler uh, and faster because it's too, too high cost for every company to to support separate application on, on for for different uh, platforms so definitely i can announce that that new new version of gg will be developed in flutter that's it thank you so much right uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Rommel. Uh, yes, and with this announcement, I think this is a really good, uh, really good news because uh, we'll help to bring this uh, almost one million user application to Flutter, and this will be indeed a great case uh, to develop. There are also different, very promising features that will be there implemented, but I believe I cannot tell those secrets yet. Uh, however, what is very important here is that the clients should be aware because. Uh, aware also of the limitations, not only promises. So we should generally, as a community, uh, use the approach of uh, under-promise and over-deliver. Like, make your clients very aware of all the problems that are there. Don't make fake promises regarding the web. Don't make fake promises regarding the desktop, since it's still unclear. I mean, we all can do and we all should do those applications also for the desktop and the web. That's our also priority, and we're also trying to experiment with that. But be honest while communicating that to the client, right? Because the worst thing that can happen for us is that we will promise and those clients will be uh, simply uh, will not meet their expectations, right? And uh, this can um, trigger a better reaction. So let's avoid that, like uh, all of us. And uh, what is also very important uh, when we are thinking about uh, uh, selling the solutions to the clients that when you are doing so, please remember that you need to provide the support because the flatter is still at the stage where they are not like uh, uh, teams uh, inside corporations and if you are creating the project if you are bringing this project like peter t from zero to one then you need to remember that you need to uh, take care of this project later and maintain that and i know that there are a lot of software houses in the market who are reluctant to maintain the project after this perfect scrum period has ended but we should have this obligation to take care about all those projects and products that we created um, at least until the time verse you know where when our clients will have the support to team uh, on site. So uh, please remember that in your future offers uh, include uh, SLA, SLAs and, and conditions for that. Uh, right, and what's also very important for us, for the whole community, is that we <coughs> share the cases like here, like today with Mr. Romwald, we show all the news about the new projects uh, being developed in our community uh, because we need those case studies, right? We need those case studies, especially from the industries which are very mature because when we are looking at our clients, it's often the case that uh, they, are, uh, they understand arguments in favor of Flutter, but they are still, since they observe mostly the, their own niche, their own industry, they are in touch with their competitors, so they are waiting for the competitors to pave the way and to learn on their mistakes, right? And 
my point is that they don't need to. My point is that if we share case studies, if we share great examples of applications being developed, it will be uh, hugely beneficial for, uh, for example, my clients from insurance industry, if I can show to them that there was an insurance project created somewhere in Brazil or Japan, right? Because this will uh, give an example of uh, technology being improved in this particular environment. And uh, for that, uh, I would like to ask you also to contribute to the report well, that we are creating. This report still for like 2019, because this is the report that intends to summarize what has been achieved last year with the flatter kind of projects have been created. And we have a lot of entries already there. And I can show you some initial insights from the project. But I think it will, will, it will be visible. Yes, fortunately it is. So if we look at the industries that are submitted within our study so far, we can see that entertainment and education are leading the way, but more mature industries, like for example fintech, are still um, somehow uh, behind. So we need to take care to uh, incentivize our clients from those industries uh, to experiment with the Flutter more, to create some POCs and to um, uh, try to pave the way for others. And what's also important that if we look at uh, from the perspective of the submission that we have so far, uh, if we look at the number of users of those applications, those numbers are still uh, not that substantial. I mean, for the there are cases with B2B applications um, which are very particular and, and where you can uh, um, uh, where you can see that the number wouldn't be bigger just because of the target group uh, which is addressable by the product but we indeed need to look for the cases um, where there is a broad audience for the product because what I've showed you recently that there is a great buzz around Flutter and it's not only in our heads but it's like happening and in the internet there and this buzz this buzz creates uh, opportunity but it also creates Creates responsibility. I mean, if we do, if we uh, don't, if as a result of this great buzz, there won't be some great application on the market, winning the hearts of millions of people in a like mature industry. Uh, after this buzz, there will be a disappointment. Right? So we need, to, we need to make sure that we deliver great projects uh, to the market. And there's also very one last <coughs> insight from the report. It shows that what is still the strongest with the Flutter is indeed the community. Because we have, uh, 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 looking at the net promoter score, so uh, by analyzing the answer to how willing you are to recommend that tooling to other developers, uh, uh, from very positive, uh, uh, there's a very positive feedback uh, regarding Flutter. So right now I would just to ask you to contribute to the report so if you can uh, follow this link, if you can uh, save this link and, and send us uh, your projects uh, later on, we will be extremely extremely grateful. We will obviously share this report as soon as we get like uh, uh, a lot of entries. Thank you very much for today. Thank you very much for being here.